what I was telling you about. Like, I don't really sleep a whole bunch. <laughs> right. I don't sleep late anymore because. I mean, like, when you got dreams and stuff that you're trying to achieve, like, you literally, it'll wake you up. So, you don't sleep late. Like, you get up, you get at it, you get on it. And it, I just find I just don't sleep late no more. My dreams, for real, wake me up. So, they wake you up, right? Yep. I just get up and get at it. They make you break. That money go for talking to me. I would have took them out on time. Huh? Whatever. Here. Go. Go. Alright. Probably eat, end up eating this in the car. I do not like eating before I work out, but I'm a little behind today. So I only want to eat a whole bunch of stuff before I work out, but I got to because missing the meal is not what you want to do. So that is why I'm packing my lunch right now my second meal because you just never know what's gonna happen and i'd rather it be in my bag to eat it than miss it true, true. <laughs> and then i end up trying to feed myself or whatever's around and um that ain't what you want stay on the plan you gotta plan ahead Going for a hundred, but that one hundred three, so I'll take it. Okay, I'll take it. And what's that? Just sweet potato, some baked sweet potato. I got um some ground turkey that I made the other day, so I will add this. And I got some rice. Uncle Ben's, we're gonna need some money when this come out. Right, right. <laughs> ben, I need you. I eat a lot of this, so I need you to help a play out with the rice game. either packing my food or I'm like prepping my food so I gotta make sure that this is thawed out so when I get back from the gym I can cook this for dinner um because the food is 80% of the battle right, right. 80% of the battle if you get your food right all you gotta get up and show up for the rest of it I'll get the chicken out so then I can pop this in the oven, season it, and put it in the oven when I get back and it'll be for dinner. Time to get up. It's 4 a.m. It's time to get up. Yes, baby. Um, you really forgot that juice. I'm sorry. You could get your own juice. You you could get your own juice, sir. You did not need me. You didn't need me. You didn't need me. Here. Yeah. Goodbye. Go eat your breakfast. Wrong way. <laughs> and then your other little dreams wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Right, right. That's a big dream. <laughs> Those kind of dreams wake you up too. But <laughs> so, what, what time this one wake you up? Um, honestly, I wake up an hour early. 
before hour earlier than I need to be up for myself because I make sure I get up and make his breakfast every morning before I make mine and do all his school stuff. So if I need to be up for myself at six, I'm usually gonna get up at five for him, make his breakfast, make sure that stuff is done. His book bag is packed, his lunch is packed. So by the time he gets up, we get dressed, his food is, he get his food, we out the door, we going to school. And then I'm going to the gym right after school, dropping him off. So, mm. but yeah, I get up a, a, a hour earlier most days just to make sure he's straight, and then I get him up. But it's a lot. It's a lot. So you got like three full time jobs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got a career in public health, and then I got this full time job, and then training is a full time job too because. Like I said, all the cooking, um, then the actual training time in the gym, traveling on the road, like the to and fro stuff, like all that stuff adds up. So like you literally can dedicate in a normal day five or six hours just to your dream, whether it's actually sitting down working on it, traveling to your dream, traveling back from your dream. Right. Like you can dedicate five or six hours easy. So when people say, I don't have time for this, or I don't have time for that, like you really do. It's just whether you're going to dedicate and get it done. That's it. What the heck? No animals allowed. No animals allowed. <laughs> you done. You turned into an animal. No, I no, but seriously, no animals allowed in the house. I get it. What else we need? Um, we got your water. We got the water. And that's all your jacket, man. My jacket. Yeah, your jacket. Get your jacket. Where? It's on the steps. Give me an iPad. Give me an iPad. Get your jacket. Get your jacket. Get your jacket. Come on, Trey. Get your jacket. All right, let's make it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on, baby. I literally have every charging device in my truck. <laughs> like, <laughs> charger for my watch. I got a charger for my phone. I got a charger for my work phone. I also have a charger for my iPad um, as, I, as I'm driving. So yeah, like every charger is in my car. <laughs> I pass four gyms before I get to this gym. So same thing. I used to train on a different gym. And I literally pass three or four gyms before I get to the one that I'm actually training out of. But it's because... Like, you go where your trainer is, for one, but for two, like, I'm dedicated to it. So that 30-minute drive, that 45-minute drive, I chalk it up. Like, I got to get it done, so I got to go and do it. So it is a drive. It's a dedicated thing to drive 30, 40 minutes from your house just to go work out. But it is what it is. It's a part of, it's a part of the process. The commute is part of it.
to mix my cardio up. My metabolism is kind of high. So I got to keep switching my cardio up and stuff. Because I'll be in here working out and won't break a sweat. Mm. <laughs> so sometimes I'll come in here and I'll do sprints. Other times I'll come in here and I'll get on the stairs. But I got to keep shocking my body because it'll kind of plateau. And it's just hard for me to find enough, um, find the right balance to like what type of cardio I need to do for this amount of time so that I'm actually burning the calories, get my heart rate up. But it's hard. So like right now, I'm after sprinting, I'm not, I ain't broke a sweat yet. It's gonna take a while. Well, keep that hoodie on, it's gonna help you. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Time to get busy. Oh, what are you gonna do? What is you rocking? Oh, you know, it's just a little razzle dazzle. Just a little razzle dazzle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a little razzle dazzle, you know. Body by D. 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 Day. I've been heavy, so I guess you see this short frame and you see this 140 pound person put up sweet. weight and keep going, don't you know, don't lose body. And people start asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what you got going on? This was not like this when I came in here. This is what I just broke doing squats. Just broke this <laughs> a few seconds ago. <laughs> Lifting up heavy weights, like I will hit my hand on the weights. I might drop the weight and try to catch it. It hits my nail. It's just inevitable, like, but I gotta keep my shit nice. How much you spend on nails? <sighs> oh. <laughs> So because I break them often, <laughs> like I might probably should go get them done like every two and a half weeks. Nah, I'm in there like every week and a half. I'm like, can you repair this? Can you fix this? So yeah, you know, I might drop 70 or 80. Ooh, a week? <laughs> every two weeks. <laughs> every two weeks. And it's just I break them, I do stuff picking up weights, but it comes with the territory. So
off season, we try to just grow, grow your muscles, all of that. So sometimes I'm lifting really, really heavy. Um, some days it's a lighter weight and it's just a whole bunch of reps. So my muscles get taxed and burned um, with the movement and the lighter weight. And some days the heavy stuff get me, some days light stuff get me, but you just kind of push through. But you gonna get got. Oh, you gonna get got. <laughs> <laughs> the getting will get got. <laughs> I think it's strange but like when I get winded or I'm tired I dance so like if I'm in here and I'm really tired I won't like hold my hands up and breathe or nothing like I literally be in here <laughs> like <Okay>. dancing <laughs> because it's, it helps me to calm my breathing right. and like one of the best things you could do is learn how to calm your breathing in life <laughs> but also in here but just it helps you to like calm your breathing and I'm not like taxing and trying to like bring in so much air like I'm actually focusing on dancing so my breathing like naturally calms so like people might see me dance on like I'm playing but I'm actually calming my breathing so it's just how I do it other people might raise their hands or take a knee I just start dancing so. <laughs> training before competition was like speed and endurance and strength a lot of everything I do now is real slow and like time and attention making sure I'm activating the muscles that I'm using or whatever. So I have to like think about, all right, this is how my muscle needs to activate when I'm lowering the weight or when I'm pushing the weight or what have you. It's just a, a lot more of being intentional and thinking about the movements that you're doing so that you're getting the actual benefit from the work that you're doing. So it's just really slow and controlled. That's why you see me moving this slow. <laughs> Not because I was heavy, but it's because I'm trying to control it and how much um, tension and pressure is putting on my muscles. but they kill shorts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they thigh is saying lies, but...
Before I was like really into working out heavy, I could not do a pull up. Like everybody got different goals. Like it would be small stuff that was my goal. Like I want to be able to do like five pull ups. <laughs> Body weight, just pull up. Cause like for women, your arms usually is your weakest link. And so it takes so much for us to develop enough upper body strength to actually do a pull up. So like my goals weren't like be hella small or like do none of that. It was really just simple stuff. I want to improve on these things that I know I'm weak in. And like, so all of that stuff has like, are like transferable skills for me. So as I'm kind of honing in on things that I'm weak in in the gym, I try to do the same thing in my life. Like I look for the places where I'm weak and I try to work on those things. Everybody can be great at the things that they're good at. Like you gotta go in the places where you're not as strong. And so that's how you get good. That's how you get great. So you actually work on all the stuff that's bothering you, all the shit that make you uncomfortable, all the things that make you cry sometimes. <laughs> like that's the stuff you need to walk into as opposed to walking away from. And like I just try to spend as much time as I can in an uncomfortable space so that I can be as good as I know that I can be. Um, and that's it, you just work on your weaknesses and get way stronger. category that I, um, that I compete in is wellness and so one of the main focus areas of like the wellness shape or the wellness body is like full quad development nice glutes so that's why you see me doing kickbacks and donkey kicks and heavy weight um, deadlifts and stuff like that for my hamstrings and glutes but other outside of that is a full developed quad or whatever so just making sure that your muscles are fully developed nice size all the way around top of your quad side of your quad all sides full development so I spend a lot of time working on quads working on hamstrings hamstring tie-ins so that your glutes show so that's a lot of people like for females you know it's like I want a nice butt I want a nice butt but a, a great way to like get your butt to show and show around is to work on your hamstrings everything that tie into the glute that brings the glute up so you just got to do a lot of different things and I think a lot of times people don't really know like what to do or they see stuff on Instagram or they see stuff in social media about like how you do this or how you do that or how I get this part of my body to do that and sometimes it's wrong <laughs> So I spend a lot of time with my clients just doing education in general, like just talking about your food and talking about your muscles and having them to think about what muscle we're using when we do a movement so that when I'm not there, they can do the shit on their own and they're doing it right. So they're actually activating the muscle that I'm asking them to work. But a lot of that is like retraining your brain. So a lot of stuff that my clients come in and say to me, um, spend a lot of time retraining them to think differently about different information that they're receiving every day so like whether it's what muscle what movement you need to do to grow a muscle or it's what foods I need to eat 
to, you know, shape or, you know, get lean muscle. I spend way more time educating than I do <laughs> in movement. But I'm trying to make sure that in absence of me, they got this. They don't need me. I want them to grow out of needing me. Um, so for me, it's not about money. When I work with my clients, it's all about making sure that they're fully sustainable outside and then working with me. So when they walk away, they got it. They don't need me no more. Okay, Mama D. Huh? See, okay, <laughs> right. Mama D. I hear you. <laughs> raising you know, sons and daughters. You know, Mama's raising them and send them out to the world. <laughs> That is literally his usual. <laughs> like, how he over there at that table? That's it for him. That's it for him. He don't need much. He do not need much. So, D, how do you manage it all? Mommy, a career, <laughs> bodybuilding, and helping others to reach their goals? Um, I write a lot of stuff down. <laughs> but, honestly, like, you know, if it's something you love to do, you might just do that for free. And most of the time, like, with helping other people, like, I just like doing that. So that doesn't feel taxing to me at all. But, like, balancing the mommy in and balancing the career and, you know, my personal training is a lot. Um, I literally know where I'm going to be majority of the day. Like, if you ask me where I'm going to be at 2 o'clock. I know <laughs> if you ask me where I'm going to be at this time, I know because everything is real tight on the schedule. Um, but my son, like, he rolls with the punches. So I really um, enjoy bringing him with me to the gym. And so being able to have him with me allows him to see me in a different light. So mommying and coddling and loving on him is one thing, but he gets to see me what I'm passionate about. And so I'm trying to teach him about having hobbies and having something you love to do, having something you're passionate about and something you're dedicated to. So I love for him to come and watch me in that element so that he gets to see it for himself. And I mean, he, he loves working out with me, <laughs> like whatever he thinks he's doing <laughs> when I'm working out. But I really, really love having him here. Um, so I just balance it the best I can. I write a lot of stuff down. Um, because I'm passionate about what I do, it doesn't feel like work. So when I come in here, the gym is like my place of peace. I know a lot of people use it, you know, use the gym for different things. It ain't always about just looking good. Um, so for me, you know, it's easily balanced because this is my place of peace. And, um, you know, it's just easy if it's to my schedule. But it ain't always easy to um, balance the schedule, like with the travel um, time here and then actually um, packing up food and getting him prepared to come here and getting myself prepared to work with my clients. It can be a lot, but like I said, when you love what you do, you'll do it for free. So. It's your time. Let's get it. <laughs> Alright, and I gotta do this like fast? Yes, fast. <laughs> Woo! I talk about fast, fast. <laughs> Let's get it. Down. Low. Like this. In your squat. Okay. Oh, oh, shit, bro. It's about to pull. Does that, <laughs> that ain't never happened to you? No. Oh, okay, it's just me. <laughs> Down. Down All and right, go. Roll it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So why bodybuilding? Um, bodybuilding was my next step in fitness. So uh, I was an athlete in high school. Um, didn't do any uh, athletics in college because it would have been intramurals. I was at Spelman, so um, they were not paying uh, athlete scholarships outside of basketball, and I ran track. So um, I didn't do anything in in college, but. I've always been active and I've done fitness alone, meaning I didn't have a trainer before. So I've done things solo, lost weight, toned up. Um, and then I think in 2017, I actually had my first trainer um, and we worked on like a lot of mobility, just being able to move easy, making sure your form is good. And I got stronger, lost a lot of weight, um, toned up. and. 
I just kept getting stronger. And I've had three trainers in life. Um, and that bodybuilding was kind of the next stage. I'd done it solo. I'd done it with a trainer. Um, but I'd never done anything competitively. But I'm a former athlete, so competition is in the blood. You know what I'm saying? So, but it was kind of the next best thing. But also, like, it became a hobby. So one of the things about bodybuilding is some people go professional with it, where they become professional bodybuilders. Some people are amateur bodybuilders. They do it because they love the sport. Um, but for me, it's a hobby. It's a great way for me to spend my energy. But it really was the next stage for, in fitness for me. So that's why I'm bodybuilding. Okay. Woo. So what we got? All right, so we got a little bit of hit cardio. We're gonna do some sprints, and then for 30 seconds, we're gonna pop off, and we're gonna do some squat press with these 30 pound dumbbells, and get our heart rate up and all that good stuff. So, yeah. I mean, you ain't yeah. running from no dog or nothing, but a good speed. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go. All right, so um, what are your theories about health and fitness? Um, slow and steady wins the race. Nothing good <laughs> happens overnight. Like, most of the time you see people, you know, they do like a transformation or whatever, but they ain't tell you all the stuff they had to do in the middle and all the stat times they lost before they won. So, you know, slow and steady wins the race. Like, I'm really inclusive in fitness, meaning that I'm trying to get all the barriers I can out of a client's way. I'm trying to get all the barriers I can out of my own way to make sure that I can like be here and do it. Um, so include people that you love. When I say be inclusive, include people that you love in your dreams. Include people that are gonna support you in your dreams. Um, and especially in your fitness because you always need those protective factors around you to keep you motivated. Some people are internally motivated. They don't need nobody else. They don't need nothing else to help them do the things that they're going to do. But sometimes we do. We need a little push. We need a little nudge. We need somebody to remind us. So, like, my theory is surround yourself with supportive factors. Make sure that you know your why. Like, why am I doing this? Why is it so important to me? And, like, keep that first. And then, like I said, slow and steady wins the race. Every day ain't going to be a win. But if you keep being consistent, it's going to win. And you're going to win in that. So, that's my theory. And that's a wrap!